Hi, Jean. Hey, Lena. So good to see you again. Good to see you. Well, let's just have a seat. Perfect. Let's chit chat a little bit. What is your spirit vegetable? So if you were a vegetable, oh, what vegetable would you be, and why would you be that vegetable? Broccoli. Is broccoli. that also the the same expression? In English? Tall and yeah. leafy. Yeah, I don't know. It looks interesting um, it's you can eat it in so many variants right so it's i don't know you like the that, taste yeah i like broccoli. broccoli and how would you eat broccoli your favorite way uh i think i actually the most interesting way i ate it before was in a salad not being cooked just chopped up with raw uh, broccoli yeah and it was really nice maybe we'll see a broccoli flavor for arab one day one day so arab Big idea. It's the first time that we can drink plain water without anything added to it and experience taste. And then the question is, how do you get to that idea? The idea of Arab. So we're, as a generation, we're facing severe problems day in and day out. And what we know today is a lot of these problems get triggered by our consumption behavior or our modern lifestyle in general. So. We as a society have to change, but that's easier said, unfortunately, than done, uh, because we're just humans, we're stuck in our habits, we're stuck in our bodies, um, and therefore we struggle to change our consumption behavior from one day to another. So what really inspired me as a designer was to thinking about how to motivate people into a, a healthier and more sustainable consumption behavior through really clever product design instead of trying to force them into a, a new consumption behavior. So uh, yeah, and as a designer, I'm always striving to find a solution to a problem and that really drove me to get to Air Up. It really begs the question then, what makes Air Up a more sustainable solution to the problem you described? So we all know that tap water is probably the best thing to drink, right? It comes through environmentally friendly infrastructures, it's cheap, um, and the quality in most Western um, countries is pretty good. So the question is, why do we still buy uh, pre-filled drinks that uh, come with sugar sometimes and um, that get transported over long long ways and therefore contributing to unnecessary emissions. And the answer to it is that we simply crave for flavor and we crave for convenience. And uh, the solution we wanted to bring to the table should enable changing to a more um, sustainable consumption behavior, to a more healthy consumption uh, behavior, just by um, you know, not neglecting the needs and desires for flavor and convenience. So what's Arup's impact on plastic? Could you elaborate a little bit on this? One pod, and that's important, flavors up to five liters of water, or even more than that, depending on who is using the pod, and therefore can lead to um, plastic reduction. Because if you, can, if you compare it, to other flavored drinks you would buy from the supermarket. Five liters of flavored drinks normally come um, in five single-use plastic bottles. And therefore, um, one pod existing of eight grams of plastic can lead to a large um, plastic reduction. Actually, it then would be 90% um, more plastic efficient. Wow, so one tiny pod generates five liters yeah. worth of flavor. What else makes Sarah sustainable? Well, it's a, it's a reusable system, right? So you can use it over a very long time. And also the materials we chose are very durable. So actually some of us uh, are still using the bottles from the very early days on. And on top of that, and that's I think something um, that's important, when something breaks, right? I mean, that sometimes happens. Um, you don't have to rebuy the whole system, but you can just rebuy the single parts, like the spare parts. So there's the option to just replace where it breaks, yeah. which is also more single. sustainable. What is life-centered design? Is that a thing? Like, how would you describe that? Well, life-centered design is basically means that during the product development, we have not only looked at the human needs and desires, but we also had a look at the impact the product creates um, onto society, but also on the planet. For those people who are hooked onto flavored drinks, we can offer them a real alternative because 
pre-filled drinks come with sugar again, but they also are heavy and they get, have to be transported over long ways and therefore contributing to emissions and also resulting in a lot of plastic waste. And then sustainability is such a, a hairy topic a little bit because it, it's something maybe people fail to understand that it is always a work in progress. Yeah. It's never sort of a fixed set thing that's just standard. It's a continual effort. Yeah, I think you, you said it pretty well. There's no such thing as a sustainable product. I think there's only um, a more sustainable product. So what we can do is to consistently improve upon our footprint. And we are very aware that we are not perfect yet. But what we want to do and also for the future is to consistently improve. And there are so many things to improve upon, right? There's material, there's logistics, there's, uh, there's production, there are new ideas um, so I would also, not only at our company, but I would also love to see more uh, ideas such like that, um, more creative solutions to the problem of climate change um, for the future. And I'm super excited to see them. Well, I, I think at the end of the day, your innovation and your product um, and yourself as a person, it's really part of the spear tip that's you know, motivating the generation to come up with these ideas and products that going to shape a better tomorrow. So I think you're doing great work. It's been so great today to have you here to talk about hair up sustainability. I just want to thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, Lena Jungst for Air Up. Yes, thank you for having me. There's just no one here though. Yeah, no one <laughs> applauding. It's okay.